This is an English guide to learn Swedish. Hello and welcome back. In this episode I will talk about compound words. This really has mostly to do with grammar, but if you see a compound word it might be very confusing and you might not know how to pronounce it. Contrary to English, we always write two words as one if they are describing the same thing. For example, the word fishing boat is describing a specific type of boat. So with Swedish grammar we would write it as fishing boat or in Swedish fiskebåt. The simple rule is if it's one thing it's spelled as one word. This has two profound consequences. For starters, Swedish words can be nearly infinite long, or at least very long. For example, one Swedish word that you can create is the word arbetsförmedlingsavgiftsansvarig, which is a composition word of the words arbete, förmedling, avgift, and ansvarig. Secondly, it sometimes creates double consonants since the last letter of the first word could be the same as the first letter of the second word. For example, the word handduk. This word is a composition of the words hand and duk. This type of double consonant does not affect the pronunciation of any vowels. Let's take a look at some more examples of this. Askop which is a composition of the words ask and kop. Bilykta, which is a composition of the words bil and lykta. Knarkung, which is a composition of the words knark and kung. Plåttak, which is a composition of the words plåt and tak. Kassaapparat, which is a composition of the words kassa and apparat. Okay, fine. Hopefully that wasn't too confusing, so let's mention some exceptions. If the first word ends with two identical consonants and the second word starts with the same consonant, this does not create a triple consonant. Enough is enough. For example, the word cellara, which is a composition of the words cell and lara, does only have two L. Sometimes, like in this case, one could also see the word as cellara, composed by the words cell and ära. In the few cases like this that exists, you have to understand the context, but since the spelling and pronunciation doesn't differ, it's nothing to worry about as far as pronunciation goes. And uh, by the way, there's an exception sort of kind to the exception itself. I mentioned before that CK is what we Swedes use instead of a double K. But what if compound word is composed by two words where the first one ends with CK and the second starts with K? Do you remove a K or what do you do? You actually do nothing, which can be seen in the Swedish words lacklad. The aspect of compound words are actually very important, both when it comes to pronunciation and spelling, and the act of särskrivning can have a large impact on the meaning of a word. For example, the word brunhårig as opposed to brunhårig. If you're going to compliment someone, you better make damn sure you compliment them for being brunhårig and not brunhårig. 
As I done in previous episodes, I will post the link in the description to an episode of Mastering Swedish that covers this. So far I've only talked about compound nouns, but there are compounds, adjectives and verbs as well. I'm not going to talk too much about this as I'm planning on encompassing this when we move into grammar, but I want to take one important common example. The word jätte is often used as a prefix to adjectives for emphasis. Some examples are jättestor, jätteliten, jättekul, jättesnabb. Even though you now hopefully feel fairly comfortable with the pronunciation of any particular word, you haven't heard any longer Swedish texts, and this is what I'm going to read next time. I'm planning to read the two first paragraphs of the Swedish article on Wikipedia about Swedish. I will post a link to this as well in the description if you want to practice beforehand. But this is all for this time. See you next time. Thank you for watching.